So today I want to talk about Nick Saban and how he was forced into offensive evolution because on Thursday, the assimilation of Nick Saban for the sake of staying power became complete. For the first time since 1946, three players on the same team finished among the top five in voting for the Heisman Memorial Trophy, right? Which means that history was made. Crimson Tide quarterback Mac Jones, wide receiver Devontae Smith, and running back Najee Harris served to demonstrate just how Saban has changed his philosophy toward offensive football in just eight years, regardless of how much he fought that change. Harris might have won the Heisman in another season, let alone in a pandemic, with his impressive numbers. He's having a career year with 1,262 rushing yards, averaging 5.9 yards per carry, and 27 total touchdowns. If Jones and Smith finish first and second in the voting when the trophy is awarded, they'll be the first teammates since Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard to do so when the Army backfield became the first duo to perform the feat in 1945. That's pre-World War II. And there's every reason to believe Jones and Smith will, as two of the best players in con the consensus number one team in America, Smith leads the country, you know, in receiving 98 catches, over 1,511 receiving yards, 17 touchdowns as number one Alabama prepares to play number four Notre Dame on New Year's Day in the Rose Bowl at AT&T Stadium, which is indicative of just how weird the season is playing the Rose Bowl in Dallas. Jones has emerged as one of the best quarterbacks in the country just a year after becoming a starting quarterback at Alabama for the first time. He's passed for 3,739 yards with 32 touchdowns against just four picks, and he's not even the best player on his team. That's tied wide receiver Jalen Waddell, who has missed most of the season due to injury, but was performing at a Heisman level prior to sustaining it. That serves to further underscore what Saban has, you know, changed about his team's offensive philosophy since the Tide last rolled Notre Dame 42-14 in the 2012 National Championship game. In terms of helping players be more successful in life or having been in the program, whether it's personal development, academic support, career development, development as players, Saban said last week, we haven't really changed a whole lot, but how we play on the field we probably changed as the game has changed. Play a little different style on offense. What a glorious understatement that is. The watershed moment for Saban's allowance for the evolution of air raid, fun and gun, spread offense, run pass option concepts to Tuscaloosa can be traced not to starting quarterback Jalen Hurts in 2016 or even promoting Lane Kiffin to offensive coordinator in 2014. That moment came on November 12th, 2012 just two months before winning a third national title in four years when Johnny Manziel led Texas A&M to a 29-24 upset win against Saban's number one ranked Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Manziel rode that performance to becoming the first freshman to win the Heisman in history. It didn't so much matter that the Tide won the national title that year. It didn't so much matter that A&M didn't even play for the SEC title that year. It mattered that Air Raid Disciples Kevin Sumlin and Cliff Kingsbury had taken an undersized firecracker quarterback, used his ability alongside a pyrotechnic scheme designed to run up the score to beat the man who had become one of the game's greatest coaches by recruiting the best players in the country and coaching them to execute the most mundane offense in the sport without error. A month before the AM loss that would force Saban, the last great bastion of three yards in a cloud of dust on offense, had lamented what the game was becoming with the proliferation of no huddle, fast paced offenses who took no time to move the ball, no substitutions between plays, and no mercy on defenses. The offensive idea was simple. Once you find a defense in a scheme you can take advantage of, keep going after that weakness, and don't give it a chance to change personnel. It's the guiding principle Kiffin used earlier this season with Ole Miss 
to score 48 points and put up 647 yards of offense on Saban's defense. In 2012, Saban argued this was making the game unsafe and rooted in a teleconference with a monologue to which I'm going to give you inside of this monologue. Quote, it's obviously created a tremendous advantage for the offense when teams are scoring 70 points and we're averaging 49 and a half points a game, he said. With people that do those kinds of things, more and more people are going to do it. I just think that there's got to be some sense of fairness in terms of asking, is this what we want football to be, end quote. Eight years later, Saban could be talking about his own offense. Alabama ranks second nationally in scoring with 49.7 points per game, scored 63 against Ole Miss, and at least 38 in every game the Tide has played this season, and ranks number one among teams with 10 or more games in yards per play at 7.7. Only Oklahoma has averaged more yards per play in a season over the last five years. This, while Alabama ranked 46th in yards per play just four years ago and has finished among the top three in that stat in each of the last two years. Is this what we want football to be? It's no longer an interrogative you know, sentence that we ask. This is what football is. Declarative, definitive, and staying in power. Just like Nick Saban.